top, triple try. It's through, for three! Benny Johnson shoots the Pistons up a deuce! Umar, sideline left, he's trapped over there, bounces inside, no look to Tarot, and he scoops, he scores! What a pass by Dumar! It's out of a trap! McGuire taps it away, though, and Mahorn picks it up. This is sideline left to Mark. The 1988-89 Detroit Pistons ruled the basketball world. They were the object of affection by the city of Detroit and the state of Michigan. But they were loathed outside of it. It was a roster that reflected the image of the city it represented. A tough-as-nails blue-collar squad that put the success of the team first and second and third. The ultimate success for this group could only be realized by one accomplishment, an NBA championship. Choosing the ingredients for this championship recipe was general manager Jack McCloskey. In his 10th season in Detroit, Trader Jack finally saw all of his hard work pay off in the ultimate sense. Probably the best word is mutual respect. Uh, I got the players, Chuck coached the players. And that's basically, it, it, it was very simple. And uh, I, I don't think we ever uh, uh, went into anybody else's area that, that shouldn't have been. What I seen in Jack was an intensity and a desire. You know, there was a commitment from this man and you can see the passion within him in terms of how bad he wanted to win and how hard he was willing to work to achieve that goal. You know, I knew every night that I went to bed, Jack was working trying to improve the team. The design was to acquire the best possible players we could, either through trade, the draft, or uh, free agency, which wasn't in vogue particularly, you know, at that time. But, uh, we acquired Bill Lambeer because he was a powerful force rebounding, tremendous rebounder, and very physical player. Uh, we acquired uh, Dantley and uh, Aguirre because they were post-up people and could score. But uh, all those acquisitions we had over the years, uh, uh, th they were by design to get the best player, you know, in that particular position. Whenever Jack would walk into the locker room, you know, I bet you if you sat me, Vinny, Joe, Lamb, James, Dennis, Sally, Chuck, if you set us in the locker room today and Jack McCloskey walked in, we all do this. <laughs> <laughs> they were tough. They were aggressive. Uh, they were a throwback, too, of, of the old days, too, when you came down, I mean, when you came down the gut. You know, you weren't going to get a layup. You were going to get hit. And you had to go to the foul line. But you weren't going to get a layup. And a lot of people, a lot of teams, you know, were very concerned about playing the, the bad boys. And they talk big, say, well, we're going to be physical with them. But they backed down. Detroit won 37 of 41 games at home on the way to a franchise best 63 and 19 overall record. Far and away the best in the NBA. The Pistons closed out the season by winning 27 of 30 games in March and April. In March alone, Detroit triumphed 16 times, suffering defeat only once. The 1989 NBA playoffs brought more of the same. It's McHale again. It's swallowed away by Sally. A great defensive job. Rodman rebounds way up to Sally. He dunks over Perry. And they're celebrating on the Detroit bench. Dishes to Dumars. The Pistons are on their way to the second round. The Pistons easily disposed of the Boston Celtics in an opening round three-game sweep. 
the Eastern Conference semifinals brought a new challenger, but the same result. Gets it back on top, triple try. It's through for three! Benny Johnson shoots the Pistons up a deuce! Off it comes to Vinny, up the middle, behind the back to Sally on the baseline. Back to VJ on the wing. He'll spin foul line, come dotted line, flip it up, it's in and out! Rodman follows, and it falls, and he is fouled! Here's the intentional miss. Ball tapped out. It'll roll across the timeline, and the Pistons will sweep the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks went down in four straight. Next up, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. Led by 32 points from his airness, Doug Collins' team shocked the Pistons in game one, handing Detroit its first postseason defeat. In game two, the Pistons bounce back in grand fashion. Way to Isaiah. They rush it up the middle. Isaiah with a stutter step. Now a 360. Hope he scores! Isaiah Thomas's 33 points led the way in a nine-point win, tying the series at one. In the Windy City, game three proved to be a war. McGuire can't save it. Chicago has it. And McGuire is out of sight right now. Michael Jordan's 46 proved too much for the Pistons as Chicago snuck out a two-point victory and found themselves two wins away from the NBA Finals. With their backs to the wall, the Pistons came back scratching and clawing. Jordan. Robert. And that's what we're talking about when the Pistons want to make Jordan pay whenever he gets in the paint. Our focus was, uh, let's make life miserable for Michael Jordan. In games four and five, Air Jordan was grounded, connecting on only nine field goal attempts combined for those two games. The Pistons put their attack in overdrive. The Bulls were never going to win again in 89, and the bad boys would make them suffer through three straight defeats. Any off the screen from Edwards, inside against Jordan, flips it up, it hands it, falls, and he is fouled! In game six, back in Chicago, Jordan did his best to stave off elimination with 32 points. Gives the sellers, gets it. But it wasn't enough to slow down this championship destined team. Wire. Go out of the lane to Dumars. Joe D. Low inside, right to Lambeer. He'll go baseline and hook and hit it. Once again, Isaiah drilled home 33 points to blow out the candles on the Windy City party. Dumars across the timeline. Joe D. will just dribble out the clock. Four, three, two, one. It's over in Chicago. It's the Pistons in six over the Bulls. And the Pistons are Eastern Conference King. A year ago, we opened the finals at the Forum in Inglewood, California. But this year, the home court advantage belongs to the Detroit Pistons, who battled all year to gain it. And so tonight, in their beautiful new palace, about 35 miles outside of downtown Detroit, it'll be game one of the finals. The Detroit Pistons attracted better than a million fans. And if this championship series gets to game six or seven, they will be played right here in the palace, unlike a year ago, where the Lakers pulled it out by winning six and seven at their home. The Los Angeles Lakers had swept their way into the NBA Finals. Even with the pre-series loss of Byron Scott, Pat Riley's confident group was talking three-peat. That talk ended minutes into game one. Detroit, they want an up-tempo game. They want to get a lot more shots. And Isaiah Thomas starts it all off. The Pistons steamrolled the Lakers 109-97 in game one. Foul trouble was a problem for us tonight, but the biggest problem was the Detroit Pistons. They kicked their ass. The Lakers bounced back in game two. Both teams went at it for 48 minutes. 
L.A. was dealt a severe blow when league MVP Magic Johnson suffered a hamstring pull late in the third quarter. Without their leader, the Lakers managed to step it up and build a nine-point lead late in the third. But the Pistons rallied down the stretch. Rodman from Thomas. The Pistons limited the Lakers to only 13 points in the final quarter. Detroit was protecting a two-point lead with two seconds remaining. And James Worthy had a chance to tie the game after being fouled driving to the hoop. There he is tonight, four of six from the line. He needs both to tie it. The Pistons pulled off a narrow 108-105 victory, led by Joe Dumars' 33 points. Joe D continued his assault in game three, netting 31 points, 17 of them in the third quarter. Layup stripped away by Dumars on defense. Talk about playing both ends of the floor. Joe pulls up. He's hot. He's got it. 19 points for Dumars here in the third quarter. Dennis Rodman was a demon on the board, hauling down 19 rebounds. The Pistons turned a five-point deficit into a five-point lead with just under two minutes left in the fourth. The Lakers attempted a comeback, pulling to within three with nine seconds to go. Joe D, who had done so much damage offensively, finished off the Lakers on the defensive end. You want to get a three, but if you can't, a lot of times teams will go for a quick two and then try to steal or foul quickly. Here's Rivers. Deflected by Dumars, great defensive play and a... When you plan for everything, and it's about 15, 20 people on the floor, and you look up in the stands, and it's 20,000 people, let's say, in the arena, and you see about 100 people huddled together just cheering for you, it's just a great feeling. It's like we've come in here, and we're going to take on the entire Los Angeles. And, uh, and we, you know, we win the game and all. It's, it's, it's a great feeling to win on the road because... Uh, you're looking around and you know everybody in there is against you. I like winning on the road because you're very, very core group of people that go with you, your family, your friends. Um, it's a very tight-knit bunch. You're normally who the ones that you surround yourself with. The Pistons' 114 to 110 victory gave them a commanding 3-0 series lead. Early in Game Four, the Lakers were looking like their showtime selves. With a two-on-one break, it's worthy. They rang up 35 first quarter points on the Pistons. But the final three quarters of the Lakers season turned into a slow, grueling suffocation. The Pistons gradually cut into the lead, tied it, and then ran past L.A. Jimmy Johnson gets it to James Edwards. The basket counts and a foul. As the Pistons pulled away to certain victory, the game was put on hold to pay respects to one of the great players the NBA's ever known. That's it for Kareem now. That's it. He's out. With Kareem sitting, Detroit finished off the Lakers. Four seconds left. He's got the ball. He should have it. Isaiah hangs out of the ball, flips it up to the rafters. Detroit is the city of champions again. as one of the greatest defensive teams ever in the history of this league. A victorious team that battled all the way to a seventh game last year before losing, and this year they have done it four in a row. It's like you had died and gone to heaven. I remember singing Ohio Players song, Heaven Must Be Like This. I was just wanting to get to the locker room and drink the champagne. <laughs> we had really experienced the uh, championship the year before when we lost to the Lakers. Uh, we knew what it was about. We knew what to, uh, what to expect when you won. Um, it was actually a relief 
for many of us because we didn't fail in our quest. Well, I remember my hair was nappy, I had a beard, I smelled funny, but I still ran over and picked up Isaiah, and, uh, who was yelling at me, and James Worthy had like 42 points, and he wanted to smack me in the head, but I picked him up, and uh, I was the happiest cat there ever could be. I mean, I didn't want to take my uniform off. Dennis wound up not taking a shower, taking his uniform off until the next day or the day after that. I can, I can remember the stench, but uh, <laughs> I had a, I mean, it was a feeling of accomplishment. I don't even know what was even better. So congratulations to Joe I've got a moment to get you over here, and just such a solid, gutty performance on your part. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Uh, we worked hard for it. Uh, that was our purpose coming into this season. From day one, we wanted to get here, and here we are. It was great. You know, I was maybe 26 years old, uh, fourth year in the league, and I was MVP of the finals. Uh, as a young player at that particular time, it's, it's, it's everything that you can dream of as a player. To win the world championship, you be the MVP of the finals. Uh, any young player in the league will tell you right now that that would be his number one dream, to win the championship and to be the MVP on top of it. Uh, for me, it was, it was absolutely incredible at that particular time in my life. Uh, now that I look back on it, um, I'm a little bit more nostalgic about it. Uh, I tend to look at the list of MVPs. Uh, who came before me and after me since then. And uh, it's some very good company on that list. And uh, I'm more proud of it now probably than, uh, than what I was at that particular time. At that time, I was just kind of excited about it. Now I'm a little bit more nostalgic and a little bit more proud about it right now. And right now, let's take a scene up at the Palace of Auburn Hills. And they're going wild up there. Over 20,000 screaming fans packed the Palace for Game 3 and 4 to watch the network feed on Palace Vision. The team was greeted at the airport like returning war heroes. Two days later, thousands of fans lined the streets of downtown Detroit for a victory parade. Later that afternoon, the Palace was the site of another championship rally. The team would never be the same. Though the Pistons had another championship on the horizon, it would not be the bad boy. You know, today, um, I guess, was the last straw in the end for all of us uh, in terms of our bad boy image. Uh, you know, we were 12 guys who were together, who worked hard all season long, who's worked hard for the last three years. And uh, one of us is gone now. Uh, Rick Mahorn's not here. So, therefore, we can no longer uh, have the same type of basketball team that we had last year. And we will no longer be called the bad boys.